what's going on guys and welcome back to the good old boys channel so it's that time we are doing a little oil test as you can see we have a little wix uh oil test here uh, at the time of this filming we're starting out at 4,500 miles and then uh, i am going to reset the trip for you guys so we can see how far i take it so now we'll get the bike all warmed up and then we'll come back and fill our oil tester up all right guys so you can see we got 30 miles on the trip 4458 miles overall and then 141.2 hours so we're back from a ride that's the miles that we're changing the oil at now the last time i changed the oil was in the uh oil change guide video so we'll take the miles that was on the bike subtract them from uh the miles that are on it now uh and then figure out how many miles we have on this oil time to drain the oil so we're getting ready to drain this oil here so there's some important information and instructions of course so you guys can read through this basically it says we need to clean around the drain plug and we need to take the sample after about half the oil has drained out so we're just going to take and wipe it clean so we don't get any contaminants in there if you get stone or mud in there, you'll show a high uh, silica rating in your oil. Cleaned up pretty much the best I can. Uh, you can see some of this mud is just baked on here. Even with my finger fingernail, it won't come off. Alrighty guys, so this is gonna go very quickly. So uh, it says not to remove the cap until you're ready to take the oil sample, which is halfway through the oil draining. But, um, the deal here is, is this has got very little oil in it, so uh, we need to have this thing ready to go, the bottle ready to go. So uh, yeah, and also if you guys are looking for an oil change video, I'll link that in the description box below. This is more of just the oil test here. So here we go. All right. So this is where we wanna get ready here. Okay. okay guys i think that was probably about halfway you can see there's a little more coming out but nothing too much so i think that was about the perfect spot to collect the oil at now every time i change the oil i always like to take a look down in this screen and just see what we got going on and uh doesn't look like much is going on in there you guys can see it's pretty clean no real contaminants other than uh, just the dirty oil mostly I see a few teeny tiny particles back in here down at this bottom bottom section there but that's about it so I'm going to wrap this up and uh, do the full oil change. So uh, that we're just going to be doing off camera because, again, this is just an oil test video. Okay. So cap's on nice and tight. Oil is still nice and warm. That was another uh, stipulation in the rules that said don't wait too long to drain the oil out. You want it nice and warm and all mixed together so we uh collected this sample probably five minutes or ten minutes after i shut the bike off which is well within the recommended uh time frame to collect the oil so you can see we got the oil perfect in here it's right to the fill line so in the directions all you have to do is take this bottle put it back in this one and put your shipping label on this but uh the key thing here or word of advice is a lot of people online are saying don't just ship it in this uh, bottle here. What you need to do is take the original box that you got this in, uh, of course put this inside uh, this container and then you're gonna put the address on the box with this stuff in it and ship it. Uh, they don't like shipping uh, oil analysis test kit. Word of advice, just put this stuff in a box when you go to send it out, which is what I'm gonna do. So inside your sample kit, 
there's an information card. Don't send your oil samples in without filling this card out. This is very important. Information sheet is filled out. Our sample is ready to ship out. I'm just going to stick this in the mail and then they'll give us our results through email. Alrighty guys, so we got our results through email, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Before we take a look at the results here, I did want to show you guys how quick the turnaround time is. Now keep in mind, I did buy this one on Amazon uh, for like $13, and it does take a couple days to get to you, but not a big deal. So I got the test kit. Now you can see here the date sampled, so that was actually the day that I recorded taking the oil out of the bike. So that's when I drained the oil into the container, which you guys saw earlier in the video. So this is the date that the analysis company received the sample. They're claiming the 13th USPS says it got to them on the 11th, which is not a big deal. And then date reported. So this is when they sent me the email, which was January 14th. All right, so now we're just going to take a quick objective look at the information here. So you guys can see here some general information, time on the unit. These are the total miles on my bike when the oil was sampled. These are going to be how many miles are on the oil itself. And then you can see some other general information like who made the oil, the type, and the viscosity and grade. Down here is where we start to get into the interesting stuff. Uh, all these, for the most part, are measured in parts per million. Anything in a box is an outlier or is uh, recorded as too high. So in other words, you know, we've got iron, which means there's wear and it's in a box. So we have too much iron in the oil. So again, we're just taking a quick objective look. You guys can take a look at the results. Again, anything in a box is an outlier. So we have silicone in there. The additives that are in the oil, contaminants, we have... 0.05% water, which is probably just from moisture from the hot and cold cycles here in Ohio. We have a viscosity test here. It's in a box, so there's obviously some kind of problem with the viscosity. And then physical chemical check. So uh, I'm not sure what this is. Probably gasoline, I'm guessing. And we have the good old stop sign here, which means we have a severe condition. <laughs> As you guys well know, this is for my Hawk 250, which is a gasoline engine, and here is their diagnosis. So, piston ring and cylinder wear indicated, copper levels abnormal, tin level appears elevated, silicone level is very high for this unit, viscosity low for specified oil grade. They're calling for an action here, check the fueling system. Recommend a thorough inspection of the air filter and air induction system for possible leaks. Drain oil from unit if not already done, which we have done that. As you guys know, I changed the oil when I took the sample and it says, and evaluate wear and metal debris. So I did find a few little metal flakes in the oil after the fact. They were sitting in the threads of the drain plug, but not enough to really concern me that much. Then they go on to say, inspect for source of wear may be warranted at this time. Flush unit thoroughly, resample after corrective action to further monitor. So we may or may not do another oil sample in the future, not real sure. We'll kind of break this down a little bit further. We'll kind of start in the middle here. It says the dirt level is very high for the unit. So we either have an air filter that's not working, not in the bike, or we have a leak in the air filter system. Um, so there is a possibility that it is a Chinese bike and it may have a leak uh, in the air box. So we'll have to take a look at that. Now, of course, there are other possibilities here. So one thing that I've been meaning to do and wanting to do for a long time is change the location of the crankcase breather tube. If you guys have ever looked at the crankcase breather tube, it comes up from the engine and goes straight to the bottom of the air box. So the problem with this is that you get dirt, grime, water, muddy oil water sitting in the bottom of the air box and it's got a straight passage right into the crankcase of the engine and it can run right back down into the crankcase and obviously then that's not good because you have water and mud and dirt and whatever else running right back down into your 
crankcase. So it's definitely something I'll be looking into. I think that crankcase breather tube needs to be relocated to a higher spot in the airbox and the lower uh, connection where it connects at the bottom of the airbox just needs capped off. So they're also saying the viscosity is low for the oil grade. So the action is to check the fueling system. What they're meaning by this is basically that fuel is somehow getting into the oil, whether it's the carburetor draining into the oil through the piston rings or while you're riding the bike. There's many scenarios in which fuel can drain into your oil and contaminate the oil. Obviously you don't want that because it makes the oil thinner and it prevents the oil from doing its job and it changes the viscosity of the oil. So here's the deal with my situation. There's not enough fuel in the oil for me to even detect it. Um, I can take the dipstick out of the oil. You can, you know, when you're, when you're doing that, usually you do the sniff test on the oil stick just to make sure you don't have a bunch of fuel in your oil. And in my case, I can't detect it. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't notice a change in oil level. So uh, in my case, it's very subtle. Now, there are situations where you're going to have fuel just straight up dumping into your crankcase. And in this case, it's very obvious, very easy to tell what's going on. Your oil will be way over full and you'll notice a very strong smell of gasoline. Like I said, that's not the case in my situation. In my situation, it's very subtle. You can't even tell it's happening. So once more, uh, again, the solution to this is simply to not run the oil for 3,000 miles. So in short here, changing the oil every 1,000 miles is really gonna help out because basically over time, you have more and more dirt that accumulates in the oil, also have more and more fuel that accumulates in the oil. The more often you change your oil, the better off you're going to be there's going to be less dirt less moisture and less fuel in the oil all right guys so final thoughts here we need to change the oil more often and we're going to be fixing the air box which will be in a different video so i'm not sure if we'll do another oil sample or not i mean it'd kind of be interesting to see uh, what the oil sample looks like with only a thousand miles on it versus we had almost three thousand miles in this video so I don't know, maybe let me know in the comment section below if you guys want to see a video on what the oil looks like after a thousand miles. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Woo!